Hello everyone, welcome back to The Glow Zone. I hope you all had a wonderful week and I'm very excited to see you all back here. Today we're gonna to talk about why SPF is stressed so, so much in skincare. Because I know for most of my friends and clients, people I talk about, SPF seems to be like the hardest thing to grasp. This is why it's so important. Coming from the sun, we get so many wonderful things such as vitamin D, beautiful sunlight, we get life, we get gorgeous tans, etc. However, we also get radiation, ultraviolet radiation at that. What is this ultraviolet radiation? Why is it such a problem? It comes in three different forms. We have UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC, thankfully, is blocked out by our ozone layer on our planet, thank goodness, because we would have skin, the skin of rhinos and toads and just roughness because it's so intense. But that leaves us with UVA and UVB. What are these forms of radiation and what do they do? UVB is the radiation wavelength of light that is known for actually causing the burning and blistering on the surface of the skin because it generally can't go past right here, whereas UVA goes directly into your skin. So both obviously work together hand in hand to both burn, blister, and worst of all, they damage the DNA inside of your cells. That may not sound as bad on its own, but damage to DNA causes mutations, and mutations can lead to the big cancer. Besides the awful, awful thing of cancer, several other things that this radiation can do to your skin is accelerate aging and pigmentation issues, which, no. So the reason why it will do this, because as I said, how it damages the cell, sorry, how it damages the DNA within the cell, this will damage the cell's ability to reproduce itself over and over again. It's no longer going to produce that exact same cell. It is now gonna produce a cell with maybe like this mutation and this mutation and this mutation. Um, it will also inhibit the cell's ability to create healthy cells. So it's not gonna create a healthy collagen cell that you need in your skin in order to keep yourself looking plump and like, you know, keep your faces looking very full. When you start to lack that, which will naturally happen over time as your body produces less, however, with the excessive sun exposure, you are actually accelerating this process and you'll start to see that natural form of aging, you'll see that as early as like 27 to 30 years old. So this is why we really stress like, hey, you wanna start implementing this into your routine now so that we're not aiming at uh, removing or slowing down the visibility of these signs of aging, which were totally preventable in the first place. So besides the wrinkling and the sagging skin, etc., it can actually also lead to sunspots, or as you may have heard your grandparents call them, liver spots. Uh, they coined that term because they used to think it was indication of something wrong with your liver. However, it's actually just due to overproduction of melanin in your skin in specific areas where it has been damaged and is now excessively producing it. And you guessed it, the cause of that Absolutely, it's radiation from the sun, so, so. Those are just a few of the main issues with it. Of course, it doesn't sound like that bad on its own. However, they've done trials where they had women of the same age. Some were wearing, some were just more, some just had more like loose skin and wrinkles, etc., which you'd expect to see on someone who's a little bit more mature. And then the other set of women had lots of sunspots and discoloration of their skin. So when they were put in front of an audience and the audience was asked to guess the ages of everybody, women who had the wrinkles and loose skin were guessed pretty accurately for their age group, whereas the women with the discoloration and the, suns and the sunspots, etc., they actually were guessed almost double their age group. So it is also an extra sign of aging and nobody wants that. Another reason with this whole pigmentation that may be an issue is I'm gonna go ahead and point to you, the acneic crowd, because this is something, acne scars are a big deal and it's very hard to get rid of and it definitely hinders and plummets the confidence of those of you dealing with it. Wearing SPF daily will help to reduce the amount of this pigmentation that takes place because as melanin tries to protect you from the sun, it also actually is part of your skin's healing process. So while it's healing from all this inflammation and these infections going on, it's gonna send some melanin there, which is why you get a little spot. I'm wearing some makeup today, so you can't quite see mine, but I had a really large breakout last week and there was a 
I'm left with an imprint here for it. Just for now, but it'll go away soon. It's because I wear my SPF daily and I exfoliate and I spot treat during the time which I have my breakout. If you do not wear any SPF, that post-inflammatory pigmentation is also going to turn into a sunspot or it will be more damaged by the sun. And it can get darker and be more permanent. And again, it will just be a much bigger issue to try and get rid of in the future. So now that I told you everything that the sun can cause wrong for your skin, I will tell you how to prevent this from happening. You may, you want to be using at least SPF 30. SPF 30 is the bare minimum. And the reason for this is because SPF 30 can block out about 3% of the sun's rays or block your skin from absorbing about 3% of the sun's rays. Uh, if, you, if you go up to about SPF 50, you are now only absorbing about 2% of the sun's rays. And these, this is based off of proper usage within a lab. So you definitely wanna be reapplying your sunscreen to use it properly. Give it at least 15 minutes to set and to activate on your skin. You cannot use this as a, alone as a protection block, as a protection from the sun. You must also wear things that will basically increase the shade around you, such as wearing sun hats to block the sun from about this much of your face. Um, you may also wear protection clothing, so that would be like the swimsuits with like the long sleeves and stuff like that, because that helps, again, to shield your skin from the sun. And I know we all love tanning. It's one of the wonderful things the sun can deliver for you, and it's one of the signature things to say, I've been on vacation. Yes, I'm not gonna say never to do that, but try to minimally do that. <clears throat> and when you do suntan and you see your skin change color, please go into the shade for at least half an hour. Give your skin a bit of a break. When your skin actually changes color, that's it telling you, help me. Because it, I, I've done everything I can to protect myself naturally and if I don't get out of the sun or I don't get any SPF or some shade or something to cool me down, I'm going to burn. So please listen to your body. Um, but yes, again, so just use those three things in combination with SPF on a daily basis and you'll definitely slow down the process of aging for yourself as well as keep yourself a little bit more protected from things such as melanoma. What else you want to do is to make sure that you're storing your SPF correctly. So you don't want to be storing this somewhere in direct sunlight or under a heater, for example, because it will it's gonna deteriorate the quality of your sunscreen. Once it has separated and it's no longer at its premium quality, it is no longer gonna work correctly at actually protecting and blocking your skin from the sun. So storing this in ideal conditions, applying every day, especially if you're going to be at the beach or somewhere with excessive or long-term exposure, make sure that you're reapplying throughout the day, wear sun protective clothing, like sun hats, sunglasses, sit in the shade, Etc. I know that SPF is not that popular among the oily to acneic community just because SPF over the years has generally been like a really greasy kind of heavy feeling product and for a lot of people it actually causes and worsens their acne. I don't want to say that you should never wear SPF when you are acneic because SPF is for everyone and like how I explained earlier how it will actually worsen your acne scars, you need it. So what do you do so that you do not break out from your SPF? First, you need to determine whether or not you are whether or not you are sensitive or oily or both. Because generally when you're acneic, it is due to your skin just producing excessive oil and clogging your pores. So what you want is something that is non-comedogenic, which I say in probably every single video of mine on this channel. You also want to make sure it's oil free and friendly for sensitive skin. So that could be, for, that will mostly mean fragrance free or a minimal, mineral sunscreen. Look, keeping an eye out for those four things will help your skin adjust a little bit better to wearing an SPF daily and you'll find a lot more comfort in it as well. So I did a little bit of research and I looked up different SPFs for the different skin types and what will be better matching for yourself. So for oily acne, since I know you guys struggle the most, I went ahead and I looked up some different types for you. So for oily skin, you a good one that you can use is the Neutrogena Sport Face Oil Free Lotion or from Super Goop. Both of them are SPF 30, they're sweat resistant, they're oil free, they're good for, well, the Super Goop one anyways, for good for all skin types. 
Um, but being sports friendly and oil free means it's not going to be clogging your pores. It's not going to leave you feeling excessively greasy, but it will protect you from the sun, which you need. Uh, for more sensitive skin SPF, as I was saying before, when you're trying to determine your skin sensitivity levels, you want to generally avoid fragrances and you want to aim for more mineral sunscreen. Just because it has less chemicals than a chemical sunscreen, uh, mineral sunscreen works literally as a sunblock and it's just not so irritating for your skin. So ones that I saw is this brand called Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen, which it was a mineral sunscreen and Neutrogena Sensitive Mineral Sunscreen, which I've actually used. I was not a huge fan, but I'm not a sensitive skin person, luckily. But um, yeah, I used it and it was okay for me. Um, I just didn't like how it kind of pills on top of my products. Though I have seen plenty of good reviews underneath it online that lots of people, especially those with drier and sensitive skin, actually found that they loved and enjoyed it. Didn't irritate them, good. And for last but not least, our dry slash normal to dry skin. Um, there is Alvino Protect and Hydrate SPF Lotion. There is CeraVe 100% Mineral Sunscreen, which is SPF 50. And one that I actually really like and I currently use is my Misha Daily Sunscreen. This is actually SPF 50 and it does have fragrance in it. So I wouldn't say it's good for like sensitive skin, but even then it's not like a heavy amount of fragrance, but I, you know, when your skin's sensitive, you kind of have a better idea of what works with it better. Um, but either way, these were some options for you. So I really hope that you found this video informative and that you start using SPF every day. If you're confused as to why you need to wear it every day, rewatch this video, please, because there's so much information into here. Please wear it daily, listen to your esthetician, listen to us posting on our social medias and in the treatment room, etc. Just wear SPF every day. It's good for you. It cannot hurt you. It's good for you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today. I hope this video was informative and interesting for you. I will see you all next week. Please leave me a comment down below for anything else that you would like to see me talk about on this channel. And please check out my other socials, such as my Instagram for more skincare content. Thank you so much for staying tuned. I really appreciate you guys coming back every week to watch my videos. I'll see you again next week. Bye.